<clears throat> Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Who are we here? Jacques. Jacques, all the Jacques. way from Canada. You got up. <laughs> yes, I did. <laughs> well, congratulations, Jacques. Thank you. Five o'clock in the morning, yeah? Five o'clock in the morning. Very good. Well, I hope you enjoy today's episode, Jacques. Yes. Yeah. I sent that email to your friend, uh, Nicholas, now, right? Yes. Yeah, very good. Very good. We're going to give it a few minutes, guys, till we, we, we get up to... Morning, all. I know we have. Who is that? Nicola here. How's it going? How are you doing? Oh. Good. Good. Um, hello. Uh, so I'll say hello, Jack, Nicola, Yvonne, Yvonne Brenda. Brenda, hi. Hello, Olivier here. Hi hello. there. Olivier. Hi, hello. how are you? You're very welcome. You. You're first. A viewing of our, our art as well. Yeah, that's episode. right. So you're most welcome. Thank you. Um, Katrina, good morning, Katrina. Alan. Good morning. Yvonne, good morning. Yeah. Uh, just to admit somebody else now. No Hola, good morning. Hi. Yvonne, yeah. Donald, good morning to you. Katie, good morning. <laughs> Rosalind. Rosalind um, Thank you so much for sending me that link. Trina, would you mind turning the sound, sound of that down? Just a wee bit. Um, Rosalind uh, sent me a link to the Aragol, I hope I've pronounced that right, um, Arts Festival um, that is happening virtually. Good morning, Owen. Aragol. Um, Alan. Aragol. 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 Okay. The Aragol Arts, yeah. Arts Festival. Yeah. Okay, that's on at the moment. And they put up a video last night, which I only watched this morning. And it's a video uh, tour of Derek Hill, the artist's um, house up in Donegal. And it has the most magnificent drone footage uh, overlooking the lovely area. Um, and it's really worth a look. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to um, send you all a link to it. I'm gonna send you all a link to it uh, after this, um, this episode. Uh, but it's well worth a look, and it shows all the, all this sort of artwork that he has. Uh, good morning, Anya. Good morning, Regine. Good morning, Regine. Uh, oh, that's lovely. Who's that? That must be Derek Hill, is it? <laughs> no, <I hope not. laughs> Nobody, one of his paintings. Oh, perhaps, yeah. No, no, maybe not. Okay, so I, I think we nearly have everybody. We've got Anya, Rosalind, Orla. Good morning, Orla. Thank you for your card, by the way. Um, Olivia, Lynn, Katie, Owen, Donald, Regine. Good morning. Nicola, Panola, Janice, Yvonne, Nicola, Jack, and Brenda. Good morning, Owen. Yeah. And Trisha's joining us. Hi, Trisha. Trisha. Hi. Can you hear them, Owen? We should silence ourselves. Yeah, silence. Yeah, he's probably on silent. Okay, I think we're nearly everybody here. Should we um, mute uh, now? <laughs> yes, yes, please. Um, oh, okay, if everyone okay. would, would mute, I, I can mute you here. Uh, current and new participants, yeah. Continue. Yeah, I mean, you can unmute yourself if you have something to say in due course, but at the moment, I think you're all, you're all muted, okay? Type questions in. And, and don't forget, you can type a question in, in the comment box at any stage, and uh, I'd be able to see it. Now that's particularly relevant, of course, when we're gonna be talking about, um, or doing our Q&A after, after we introduce the, the studio visit. Um, so please, please do have questions. It, it, it helps, it makes the whole uh, session more interesting if you can come up with a couple of questions to, to ask the artist. Now, the artist uh, that we're going to, our surprise artist this morning, um, is, is somebody you may have seen before, but we're, I'm not letting anything out yet. Um, the, the problem we had was that his, his uh, Wi-Fi wasn't particularly good because of where his studio is, is based. Um, and therefore it was a little bit sort of iffy at times. And so we decided to record it. Now, had I got any sense, I would have recorded it like a normal video and not rely on the, the Wi-Fi, which of course I didn't think about. But we're all you know, learning uh, as we go along with this technology. 
Um, so in future, in future would be much better quality. So forgive the fact that it is a bit jumpy and also that there, there are certain little breaks in it, but I still think it's worth it. Keep, put your, your uh, volume right up so that you can hear it because sometimes it gets a little bit quiet. Um, okay. Sorry. Right. Um, okay, can, can everybody see me? Am I your main picture when you're looking at? Yes, just say yes or thumbs up. Okay, because I can see you, Yvonne, but I, and all the others are, are in small, but that's probably because you're next to me. Yeah, don't worry about it. No, that's fine. Don't touch, don't touch anything. Don't touch anything. <laughs> okay, so guys, we're going to, this uh, recording that we did is approximately 11 and a half minutes long. And after that, we're going to be talking to the artist uh, live. And um, the artist, I'm not going to say he or she even at this stage, the artist will show uh, samples of their work and uh, talk about how their work has progressed over the years um, from when they started. So let's start immediately. I think we have everybody. Oh, Autumn, hold on a second. Um, we, we just have one other person, Autumn, who's a wonderful poet. And I think she's probably coming to us from uh, Scotland. Um, she's Canadian, but I think she's living in Scotland at the moment. You're very welcome, Autumn. Thanks for joining us. All right, uh, let's start. And um, hopefully I won't miss anybody when they come in. Um, I need to share my screen for this. Okay. So here goes, Gan. Okay. Hi there. Um, I'm here in the garden of the artist we're going to meet. And uh, it's quite fascinating. He's got some beautiful stuff here just to show you before we go in. He's got courgettes over here, which are really flying. Lettuces, tomatoes, potatoes, flowers, raspberries, fantastic stuff. So we're going to go up this um, little lane here towards his studio, which is here. We'll knock, say hello. Hi, Owen, can I come in? Hi, how are you? Good to see you. So this is Owen McLaughlin, our featured artist this week. And we're paying him a surprise visit. He sort of knew about it, but we say it's a surprise. And uh, Owen is going to show us around his studio. Um, so Owen, welcome. Um, so tell us a wee, a wee bit about yourself, going back to, you, you studied art, obviously, in yeah, college, yeah? I went to MTAD in 2000. Yeah. And you've been at it ever since, basically. Yeah. 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 And at the moment, I know you're, 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 you've got a blog, which is very successful. You've been running for a good number of years. Yeah, 2010, yeah. 2010, yeah. And your latest project is COVID Eyes. Yeah, that's during the pandemic. During the pandemic. Yeah. And tell us about that. What is it? How did it you know, evolve? So I was thinking of, you know, the masks that should be wearing. Yeah, but, um, or keep our distance. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so you only see people's lives. And like, a lot of the time when I was doing paintings of different stages, I was very interested in people's lives. And so, yes. And, um, you know, so I thought, oh, for this one, I just come to move my lives. Why we choose the um, new paintings and like, mm -hmm. just Would you like to show us some of those that you've done here? Have you got any in the studio? Can you see? Yeah. Uh, well, with this one here, actually. But this is one that's just... <laughs> I'm still working on it a bit. It's, it's a self-portrait. It's kind of... It's fabulous writing. Coming out of lockdown. Yeah. That's kind of how I was talking about. Ah, right. About. Okay. So it hasn't gone up on the lockdown. And I think you're, one of your more recent ones is over here, am I right? That's true, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Let's have a look yeah. over here. 
that. And what medium are you using there, Owen? Yes, watercolor. Watercolor. Yeah. So I, I, I just use watercolor. Do you? I used to have the ones of the book. I mentioned portrait and the last few years, I was thinking that um, watercolor has less impact on the environment. So okay. It tends to watercolor. Fantastic. It has its own challenges, but um, we get <laughs> and I love the studio. It's it's a real artist studio, isn't it? <laughs> huh? Absolutely. How, how long how long have you had this studio here? Yeah. Right. Yeah. And this is your 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 workstation. Uh, I used to use a lot of the ice things here because I haven't used them. Yeah. So this glass I used to mix the things from that. Yes. Yeah, fabulous. Yeah. And so I haven't used that. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to last myself. It's great. It's great. It's great. It's great. Oh, yeah. Wonderful. So I have it on my brushes. Yeah. <laughs> So is it mainly oils and watercolour, or watercolour now in particular you're, you're using? It's watercolour, only. Only? Oh, right, okay. I All used right. to, when I was doing those big paintings, I started off with just mm -hmm. the first kind of coat. Yes. I'd be in acrylic, the dry bass mm. and work out what you're doing. And, but I, yeah. I always preferred the colours in my paintings to the colours in the acrylic. Yes. It's just as much as far as much. And, and were you saying that, that, that you combine um, watercolour on top of acrylic? No, I'm sorry. No, it's one or the other. No, these days, I yeah. just do watercolour. Okay. Oh, watercolour. So yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> okay. But when I was doing the other things, I would have to use the watercolour. Yeah. Start off with um, acrylic. Start off with the acrylic to get going mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and uh, to go, get rid of the white canvas and, uh, and then continue on. With yes. That yes. And can I ask you a delicate question? Um, where do you sell your work or how do you sell your work or do you sell your work? <laughs> um, well, I'm with the Olivia Carnegie down, oh, which yeah. is off Barnett Square. Yes. Um, so that's basically where I sell the work. That's, that's mainly your your output. Yeah. Okay. So you'd have an exhibition there. Like I'm with. Um, sometimes there's a group show, mm -hmm. maybe the summer show or the Christmas show. And that. Yes. But then you'd have an exhibition there. So exhibitions like two years. Right. Right. Okay. And um, t tell me, and I, I I hope you don't take this up wrong, but I know you've been in prison <laughs> for quite a number of years. Would you like to explain yourself? <laughs> Teach art in prison. Yeah. It's an artist in prison scheme. It's an arts council. Yes. So you're on the panel. Mm -hmm. And um, every so often, if there's an art teacher in there, it says, I kind of decide, I need to bring in an artist just to kind of shake it a little bit. Mm -hmm. Let's say someone wants to do portraits. Say, oh, I know someone who's doing portraits. And yeah. I bring him in and yeah. have a workshop. And I, I, I know I've seen somewhere that um, so, some of the, the prisoners have ended up being quite, quite successful uh, artists. Yeah, I've yeah. seen that. Um, there, was a pro there was a program on T.G. Carrot sometimes that oh. showed a few prisoners. I mean, it, it depends. There's all sorts of different people in there, obviously. Sure. And, um, <coughs> some of them have never done art before. Yeah. And actually, that's a good thing. Um, they get opportunities that they never before and it's really nice when um, somebody discovers that hmm, they could do this and maybe this one mm. or something like that. I think it's, it's the same feeling I get when I teach people yeah. you know drawing and, and, and they surprise themselves of what they're capable of. Yeah. It's yeah. it's a tremendous feeling for yeah. both parties. Yeah. Do you know? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Very good. And are you still doing that Owen or well, I was in the middle of a workshop in, I was in Feb. Feb, yeah. Uh, so, um, 
Yeah. But, um, but and the good thing about that is actually no, there hasn't been a single case in the prison. So I believe. Mm. Yeah. So they closed it down very fast and there was no visitors. You know, I think they had um, iPads and stuff. Um, Facebook, or, or, Facebook. Or Zoom, was it? I don't know. They, yeah. they had some kind of access to oh, the okay. but they didn't yeah. allow them. So no, no. Teachers were kicked out. Kicked out. You've been kicked out of prison. Yeah. Probably that's a, probably a first. <laughs> 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 they didn't want you. <laughs> Good. That's fantastic. So, um, is there anything else you'd like to show me about your practice? Yeah. What are you up to I'm, now? I'm still yeah. learning. This is the way I do the. Um, yeah, I know people have had to that, but like, if you're doing bigger paintings, I like to use them. Um, you know, super value for them. Yeah, fantastic. Yeah, it doesn't have to be super value. Yeah. I just use them. You know, for this and this. Okay. So I yeah, I still, I'm just gonna. <laughs> but as you say, watercolor is very, it's not very forgiving. But at the same time, you can get some extraordinary effects. I know this is not showing it to its best because uh, it's a little bit overexposed, but the depth of that is just phenomenal. It's fantastic. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. Um, yeah, those kind of hopefully coming out of lockdown, you know, that's yeah. why I, I didn't like that a bit coming, emerging from the dark. You know? Exactly, yeah, yeah. Super, super. That's wonderful. Um, you, you and I met first down in Kilreilly, isn't that right? Yeah. Which was a great time, uh, and I'll never actually forget that. Yeah. I was quite taken by the whole um, experience of it. Yeah. You know? yeah. Had you been down before, or was, yeah. was that your first? No, I was down before. Actually, you know Jacques. Um, I know Jacques, yeah. Canada, yeah. Um, the last time, I don't know, five years ago, since that, um, I met him down there because he was there the first time and I was there the first time. Oh. Now we were in cottages side by side. Yes. And so we met up then and we've been in contact, in contact since then. Oh. Oh. And so then when he said he was thinking of going, you know, I said I'd apply at the same time. Ah, oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Wonderful. And I mean, is, is, are there other places that you've been similar to that? Well, there's a college in, um, in Ackert. Yeah. It's just in one college and it's. Uh, Henry Paul College. Right. It's a great place, actually. Never heard of it. No. Yeah, he was donated. Henry Paul wrote a book about Ireland in Germany. Uh huh. And he's one of the people who practiced the Green Movement. Okay. And he used to come to Ireland a lot. And then he was a bottom guy, so he donated it to the state. Really? Yeah, fantastic. It's one way. Yeah, Tom McHugh and Custom House Studios and yeah. Oh, yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. So, like, it's for writers and for musicians, composers, mm. whatever, not just artists. No, I mean, the well, same, same as Killer Yeah, exactly. Because remember, we had a poet, Autumn, oh, the yeah. aptly named Autumn, yeah. since it was Autumn. <laughs> yeah, she was fantastic. Yeah. Very good. Okay, so um, this part now is recorded. But you're going to show some of your other work by sharing, because it's worth it. Maybe it's not in, in, on, on the premises, uh, but, but it goes back a number of years. Yeah. So what we'll do is we, we'll call it uh, for this, and then we'll go on to the live aspect of it. And um, maybe, hopefully, we'll be able to share your work and have further chats, and then maybe a Q&A. Yeah. All right? So listen, thanks, Owen, for letting me into your, 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 your sacred space, <laughs> which is just absolutely wonderful. I love it. It's a lot tidier than Francis Bacon's, but not <laughs> as tidy as mine, or, or Yvonne's for that matter. <laughs> anyway. No, I'm sure. So we're very, we're very privileged. We're very privileged. You're very kind. Thanks very much, John. Okay, bye. Very good. Okay. <clears throat> Did you enjoy that? Yes, 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 yes. Good, good, good. Very much. So. Yeah, thank it you. was just, it, it's, uh, Alan, it yeah. was just such a pity that we could actually hear your voice the whole time, but we could not hear his. Yeah, well, so I think, think you'll have to do a rerun on that. I, I think maybe you're right. Uh, yeah. Had I had the sense to, to just simply record it rather than Wi-Fi it, uh, yeah. it would have been a lot better. And of course, I was nearer the microphone, 
I know exactly. We, we were trying yeah. to social distance as best. I know, we could, I know. You know, yeah. Um, but I mean, it, it it was a fascinating trip, and and thank you Love so much, that. Owen. And of course, the cat is out of the bag. It is Owen McLaughlin who has been joining us uh, last week as well. He was there, and the week before, I think, as well. So he's 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 um, known to most of us. So thanks again, Owen, for that. Now, um, unless anybody has any questions, what I'm going to do now is bring up some samples of Owen's work and he's going to talk through it. So unless I hear from anybody. Um, could, I, could I just ask Alan? Yeah. Could I just ask, what was the gallery he said he showed his um, work in from? Or it's from Olivier Cornet. Olivier Cornet gallery. Actually, yeah. Olivier no, is yeah. in this Zoom call as well. <laughs> Olivia, Hello. you're there. Do you want to tell us where you are? Okay. Olivia, can you unmute yourself, maybe, if you wish? Hello, everyone. Hi there. I've there just put are. the link. I just actually put the link to Owen's page on 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 our gallery's website. Okay. Uh, my gallery is located at Three Great Denmark Street. Okay. Um, which is just beside Belvedere College, on your way to Mountjoy Square. Yes. It's a um, okay. beautiful Georgian building. And we're open every day, ex including today, actually. So I'll have to run to the gallery after this. <laughs> oh, definitely. <laughs> to open, to open Olivia, at 12 can, you, can you put your video on, Olivia? Yeah, oh, sorry. I thought oh, so I we did. can see you. Yeah, there you are. Mm -hmm. Hi, everyone. How are you? Well done, Owen. <laughs> so, yeah, the gallery is open uh, six days a week, um, only closed on Mondays. Uh, at the moment, what we're doing, it's by appointment. And I'm also asking people to wear a mask. So this formula has worked quite well because people feel very safe in, in the gallery. So we have lo a lot of work by Owen uh, in the gallery. Uh, a good selection of what Owen, I think, is going to show you today. So sure. everybody, and, you welcome. also have an online presence. A big day. online presence, yeah. I tweet every day. Um, um, uh, also Instagram, Facebook. Um, I, 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 yeah, I share Owen's blogs as well on social media. So yeah, I'm very, very active on social media as well. Very good, very good. And okay. could you give us the name once again? Sorry. I yeah, I've actually put, if you look at the chat, uh, I've actually put the link. Uh, um, it's Olivier Cornet Gallery. If you just Google Olivier Dublin, you'll find the gallery's website straight away. There's only okay. one Olivier uh, running an art gallery in Ireland. So Olivier okay. Dublin, you'll see me straight away. All right. Very good. Very good. Thank you. You'll know it by his accent. Yes. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> okay, let's, let's move on. Um, if I can mute everybody just uh, again, please. Mm -hmm. So that uh, we just have Owen and moi. And I'll screen share again and bring up your work, Owen. Oh, can everyone see that? Yeah, <coughs> yeah we can. Yeah, we'll you, can, like you can see that. So, Owen, is, is that big enough? I mean, I, you can see the thumbnails on the left-hand side, but I think it's probably good to have that anyway, because you can see what's coming up and so on. Yeah. So, would you like to, to kick off with that, then? Okay, okay, yeah. Um, I left college in, in 2000. I was an NCID and this, these kind of color abstracts are the type of thing I was doing when I left um, at that stage. And they were basically, I, I was very interested in color and the effects of color and, um, you know, how color would make you feel. And it was really just juggling with different colors, how they work together, how, how they, yeah, work together basically. And um, I, when I did my um, degree, it was on the, Concerning the spiritual um, and the art of Tony O'Malley, but um, obviously it was based on the writings of um, Kandinsky, who was who wrote a book concerning the spiritual and art. So I was kind of working on these very sort of quiet meditative paintings in the studio, and um, but at the same time I was. Um, I was getting involved in the anti-war movement and it was kind of difficult to, the two, it didn't seem to be compatible to be making these really quiet kind of paintings in the studio and going out on marches at the weekend protesting against the war. So, um, reluctantly, uh, can I move the, the paintings on or? No, I'm afraid you can't. Oh yeah, I'll just say next. You just <laughs> say next please, yeah. Okay, right. All right. Yeah. 
Yeah, I don't go any further than that, right? Oh, sorry, but no, no, I started no, no. doing these these ones. Which Will were, I go back? You can tell me to go back on if you want. No, no, it's grand. Yeah, it's grand. Um, yeah, I started a series of fifty-two heads like this. I mean, they were basically they were. It was still very much about the colour, but um, it was bringing a figurative element into it. And the reason these were in response to, um, you might remember Donald Rumsfeld. He was the Secretary of State in the US, or Secretary of Defence or something in the US. And he produced this deck of cards, which was the 52 most wanted men in Iraq. Yes, yes. And, you know, most wanted men, real kind of Wild West idea. And I, certainly didn't believe that by um, killing 52 guys in Iraq that this was going to make the world a safer place. So I started a series like this. Um, you can move on to the next one. Um, and um, we won't dwell on them too much. So um, yeah, I go on to the next one. So, so I was doing 52, these kind of sort of abstract ones, but just not very good for the soul to be dwelling on all this. So I um, started um, thinking about the people who were affected by the war, excuse me. And, and like this was just a, an ordinary soldier returned from the war. This is a series I did. I did a whole lot of this guy in particular. The paintings were called What I've Seen. And- um, Very powerful. It was, um, it was like that, just the ordinary people who are being affected by the war. And again, if you move on, there's also the women and the children. So, um, and the way I had it was, I, the, the, the portraits were very large portraits. They were sort of over a meter wide. They were 120. Well, the next one is, was 120 by 90 centimeters. So I'd have one wall in the gallery, maybe with 10 of the battered heads as a sort of backdrop and then maybe two large paintings like this which would be people affected by the war. This was a woman who was um, at a funeral and again it was just um, some little picture I saw in the newspaper or whatever and I blew it up um, to make a painting of it. In a way you're kind of making a statement by um, making a large painting out of a little a little picture like it means like this person's life is significant this person's family is significant like, but this was probably i don't know who she was it was just an american woman at a funeral and um, you know probably her son's funeral and um so it was like it's kind of to do with the media as well you know the way um there's always new images coming up every day and you see them splashed all over the newspapers one day and then the next day it's gone and there's somebody else there and they see the same. But by um, taking a small painting, a small picture and making a painting, a large painting of it, it's kind of saying, no, this is important. This person's life is important. It's not just, it's, it's sort of, what was the, oh, yeah, um, subverting the notion of the 15 minutes of fame. Yes. <laughs> like yeah. That. Um, yeah. yeah, so that's what I was doing at that stage. Um, okay. The next um, picture is from the next series I was doing, which was about homelessness. And um, this was around the time of the Celtic Tiger, actually. And we were all supposed to be doing wonderfully. And um, I remember on Culture Night, one, this Culture Night in Ireland, um, it's one night a year where all the galleries are open late and there's free concerts and poetry readings and all sorts of things um, and all the museums and that. So it's great, it's great buzz in the city anyway, and um, there's people going from gallery to concert hall to, you know, whatever. And um, but I remember noticing well, we're all having fun, having our little glasses of wine at each gallery and all that kind of thing. But there's people on the street who are really in a different world to us. So I, that's when I started making these paintings down kind of dark laneways in the city and that. Um, yeah, so you can go on. So I started, you know, the way 
the guys who are homeless might be sitting on a piece of cardboard. Mm. So I started using sort of poor materials like that and um, cardboard and bits of stick and all that. Um, I didn't quite go abstract. I often wondered if I just used the cardboard and the wire and the, the wood, would you be able to kind of create the same sort of feeling? But I never really did. I always included a, yeah. a figurative element. Yeah, I, I love the combination. Yeah. Very unique. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, and I was kind of doing a bit more kind of sculptural works here. This is um, coffee cups, used coffee cups. I was. Um, oh, actually, your own, are they? No, they're not. I used to ask people because they give me their <laughs> coffee cups when they were finished, yeah. and. Like at the time, you know, there was so much people working so hard, so late and drinking loads of coffee and drinking all sorts of new fancy coffees. And that's what it seemed like, the cafe mochas and the whatever, the flat whites or whatever. And, um, and then at the end of the day, you see, these coffee cups were being used by um, people begging on the street, you know. But, and I was, there was kind of office blocks been built taller and taller and um, you know they, it was all going to come crashing down and so it did in the end you know yes, yes. so um, yeah that's we can go on to the next one so um, this is one of my favorites I love oh, thank you no I was um, I was doing these kind of dark alleyways in the city where the poor people used to be, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Because I, I was doing grand actually. Um, so, but, um, you know, in a way, dark alleyways and things like that, <laughs> it's quite a serious and quite, again, quite a depressing thing to be um, painting. So I started painting bonfires, the kind of a bit of light, and it's kind of, um, I mean, you don't want to put people off, really. You want them to sort of think about the subject, but see, you know, is there anything we could do in a way? And um, so... Your next to... series of fireplaces, Owen, are they, are they related to that or are they quite a separate? Well, no, it's the next sort of phase, really, because um, the next Can I go one... Can to that? Yeah, go on to that, yeah. Um, I was on an artist residency in um, Donegal, and it was raining all the time. And there's beautiful mountains in Donegal, as you know, but you couldn't see anything. Yeah. But there was a lot of these empty houses and I started going into them, looking at them. And I just started got um, interested in the fireplaces because every fireplace had its own distinctive character, you know? And then um, it was also, very, these were empty fireplaces. The people who used to live here were gone. Where were they gone? So it was, um, the, the title I gave that body of work was um, the diaspora of the people. And um, yeah, so I did, you know, 30 or 40 of those fireplaces. I usually work in, in um, series, so I, I do the same thing again and again until I've kind of exhausted that, I suppose. Um, and were um, you working in oils at that time, Owen? Yeah, these were all in oils. These yeah. were all um, 50 by 50, you know. Yes. Yes. Yeah, size. Um, and um, well, yeah, that was the first exhibition I had in the Olivia Corner Gallery. Actually, it was about fireplaces. And um, that was Diaspora. So the next one you see there, um, you see, this is in um, Olivia's space. It's a, it's a lovely, tall Georgian room. And um, well, it was quite, I wanted to bring the feeling of a forest into the gallery. And these are all this, I think there's 62 um, lengths of rice paper. And they're all suspended. And when you walk in, they kind of sway a bit. So you get to kind of, I mean, they say when you walk into a forest, um, when you're surrounded by trees, you start um, feeling less tense and your blood pressure goes down and things like that. It's it's um it's good for us. Forest bathing in nature, you know. But um the ones after I had at the back of that I had um small paintings like this of, of 
burnt out forests. You can you'll see the next one here. Yes. Either that, yeah. Um, so it was kind of like it was about the significance of trees, and it was about you know climate change and forest fires and mm -hmm. you know what's happening in the world. Um, we haven't really been thinking about it or talking about it since the pandemic came came along. But that's what we were doing. That's what I was doing like was it two years ago. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I, I, that, I was at that stage that I changed from doing um, oil paintings to watercolours. Uh, yeah. I just felt that the watercolours um, had less of an impact on the environment, really. There was, um, you know, the, the studio you were in there. Oh, by the way, I'm not as uh, blurry in real life as you saw me there. <laughs> uh, I don't move around as much. <laughs> um, but the studio, it used to get you could the smell of white spirit and turps and all that was so strong in there and i wouldn't even notice it anymore because then people if somebody came in there's all the stink here but it was it had, i had got so used to it that i wouldn't even get it so i was thinking this is not good really so now using watercolor you just wash your brushes out with water and it's it feels much more and um, well better for the environment. Sure. Yeah. I, I, Owen, I use um, occasionally water mixable oils, mm. um, which I think mm, have yeah. some sort of detergent in them. So you don't have to use uh, any solvents or terps or anything like that. Uh, pure water does it and you can clean up so much easier. Yeah. Um, and whilst oil, oil, I'm sure, is a little bit detrimental, it's certainly a lot better than having to use tons of solvents and yeah, that yeah, kind of time. Yeah, no, series. Sorry, Owen. Yeah, I mean the linseed oil and that is not um, no. Not anyway, you know, it's, it's not. I think it was the white spirit I was using to wash all the brushes that was really the culprit. I know. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> um, the next series, I think you were working on when we were down in Kilrelic because um, yeah. you certainly were doing a few of them when when I was there. Yeah. I started these, actually they started, I did a picture of a potato. All but, right. Um, soon enough they started developing into something else other than potatoes. I was wondering where they actually um, faces at some stage or maybe like crooked worlds or strange yeah. planets or asteroids. Or, uh, but I think they were about um, the state of the world, yeah. And that one, you see like, this is, Okay, this is before the coronavirus came along, but even when I look at it now, I think, yeah, like the world is kind of sick, you know, and there's all these um, something strange happening, you know. And then the next one, um, but that was a flooded world, you see, with the, the melting of the ice caps and that. Fabulous. So, yeah, so I was doing that before we went down to Kilrelic. And okay. yeah, Kilrelic was great, actually. Yeah. And that's where I met you. And um, Jack and Autumn as well, <laughs> they're, they're here, aren't they? They are, yeah. yeah. It's delightful nice to see all of them. Yeah. Um, um, shall I move on then, Owen? Yeah, yeah. So when I was down there, I became kind of, the idea was um, I'm Skellig. Skellig was always in the background somewhere there. It yeah. was kind of a place that was, you couldn't get to but you were always kind of aware of it. And you'd, I'd always kind of check to see what it looked like and that. Um, and I started making these um, paintings like that. And they're very small paintings, so I haven't really figured out um, since what to do. Um, the, like the, the, the texture and the paint, even though they're watercolors there, I was mixing sand into it because I got some medium. Oh, how do you get the texture? Yeah, you can use um, a particular medium with watercolor, which I didn't know before this, and um, mix sand into it. And yes, that, that there's that does that mottled effect is because there's sand in it. Right. And then the sand presumably dries and, and rubs off, does it? Falls no, off? It doesn't rub off, you see. It's not. It dries and it's well within reason. Sure, yeah. yeah. <laughs> if you were presenting it, it would be behind glass. But no, it doesn't rub off. It's sort of. Okay. Into the and uh, would you would you put a fixative onto that as a matter of interest? A fixative? No. Yeah, I don't think you put fixative on watercolor. 
No, you wouldn't normally. But if you're if you're trying to get uh, some sort of textured like your your sand, that might have fixed it. Yeah, but you see, it's that stuff, that medium I mm. had, just a little bottle, like a masking fluid bottle. Oh right, okay. Um, yes, yes. It's a it's a medium. I can't think of the name of it at the moment. It's German, um, and it, it you mix it in with the with the paint, mm -hmm. watercolor and water. Yeah, and it gives us a sort of gluey. No, it, it doesn't affect it much at all. But when it dries, it dries like mm. a bit plasticky, I suppose. But it's not plastic, it's natural. Okay, very good. So, so some kind of gum, I suppose, or something like that. Yes, 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 yes. There you go. Oh, lovely, lovely effect, yeah. So we're coming. On? Yeah, yeah. Now, there's a bit of a story to this one, isn't there? Well, I'm doing... Um, a project over the period of the pandemic and it's funded by the Arts Council and um, there um, it's called COVID Eyes and it's a, <laughs> excuse me um, and um, yeah I have it on the website and every Tuesday you can see COVID Eyes on the website in the right hand corner and it's a uh, painting it with just eyes every week yes but it's a different story and sometimes it's old paintings that are just cropped with the eyes sometimes they're new paintings you saw that one in the studio i was working on that a week or two ago so i'm, I'm not sure how long it's going on for, for every tuesday see my normal blog comes out on thursdays yes and it's usually just to start to talk about stories in the art world in ireland are really the life of the artists is all sorts of different whatever <laughs> interests me that week maybe i've gone to an exhibition or whatever but, but this particular one owen isn't she a nurse was yeah yeah was. She, she's a nurse and you know the way people were, were talking about nurses and um, mm. uh, on the front line and all that yeah but this particular nurse she's called razan and she's um she was in gaza um helping with the when the friday protests were going on every week yeah. were the palestinians wanting to return home to where they came from in israel and um she was wearing a white coat and she was um looking after looking after some wounded protester and she was shot dead by israelis mm. Mm. it's very sad yeah yeah. All right, Owen. And then the last one is of your good self. Yeah. It's wonderful. I like it. I'm sorry here. Um, I've been handed a message. This uh, looks like <laughs> live. I can't read it. What's oh, here? Um, say the name of the medium. I think it was the name. Um, ah, yes. I think I'd have to go out and get the bottle from the studio. Um, I don't worry about it. We, we, I, we, I gave it to you afterwards, and um, yeah, and I, I put it into the link for the the video on uh, uh, Derek Hill's tour. That video right, yeah, we mentioned yeah. at the beginning. Yeah, it's, it's a bottle. bottle. It's just a small bottle, like a, a masking fluid bottle, mm. and about seven euro, I think. You know. Right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And um, well, you saw this one in the studio. Um, we did. I was just, well, we don't know what's happening next, but I was kind of thinking this might be the last, the last painting in the series, the COVID Eyes series, but um, which was kind of us emerging from lockdown. But um, it's kind of like, we're not sure, is it safe to come out? Um, that kind of idea. I don't know, really. Um, the, debate, the debate continues. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll have to be there careful. Okay, I'll stop sharing and then we can we can do a Q and A, Owen. Okay, yeah. Great. Okay, does anyone want to ask any questions? Here's your chance. Don't be shy now. Don't forget to turn on your your microphone. Um, Brenda here. Hi, Brenda. Hello, uh, Owen. Could yeah. you talk a little bit about, uh, it's, it's a long time ago, I know, the series you did in, uh, in, the, in um, Mount Joy, or in the jail? Kilmainham Jail. Oh, sorry, Kilmainham, Kilmainham. 
Yeah. Um, thank you. Yeah. And you, we had a catalog, and you wrote a lovely essay about it. So thank you. Oh, yeah. And, uh, yeah. Well, that's um, why I brought it up. <laughs> it was, you know, but um, that the, I. I couldn't include everything in the slideshow. That's basically why I was in. But it was, it was a very, a very um, significant exhibition for me. Like um, it was in Kilmainham Jail, and it was, um, well, it was related to um, 1916 and the, the Easter Rising. But. Uh, this was uh, interesting because it, that is the time when I was doing abstract paintings and um, it's hard to kind of talk about such kind of um, complicated issues when um, you're doing when you're doing abstract. So actually um, that's when I started and I started moving towards the, um, the figurative work. Yeah, so that was the so it was after, and, and it was during the time of the Iraq War, and I was doing an exhibition about um, the Easter Rising. And, you know, in a way, there were similarities because you were talking about, in, in the Iraq War, you were talking about the American Empire and, um, you know, suicide bombers and, and people who were um, fighting, you know, Al Qaeda who were. Um, it's, it's so it's I didn't prepare this it's quite a, a complicated story but like in, in 1916 you know a small group of people in Ireland took on the might of the British Empire and um, said no we're not we're not um, British we're actually Irish we have our own identity and um like the thing is, pa Patrick Pierce, oh, I didn't mention yet, but obviously I'm, I'm actually related to Patrick Pierce, who oh, yeah. was one of the leaders of the 1916 Rising. And um, he was really an educator. He, he had a school, St. Enders, and really <clears throat> what, got him, what got his go, as I say, was um, that the British um, system of education I should really say the English system of education was um, trying to just produce people who would work for the empire. I mean, I don't know if I remember this poem rightly, but there was this poem in the um, in the books um, in the English in the English book, which is um, I thank the goodness and the grace which on my birth has smiled and made me in this Christian age, a happy English child. And this was, um, you know, one of the little poems that every student who went to school yes. in Ireland had to kind of learn off. Yes. And like, it, it made no reference whatsoever to Irish um, heritage, Irish history, you know, Irish myth and legend and all that. Mm. And um, Patrick Pierce, first of all, taught that well, if we could have control of our own education, you know, we could um, we could still preserve the Irish um, the Irish what, heritage. Yeah. But, um, and, and first of all, he was okay thinking that if you had home rule, you might be able to look after the schools and you know preserve the Irish nation through in that way. But gradually. Um, he decided himself that he'd have to do more than just talk about it, you know. So he got so like <laughs> this is such a big story, as you know. What is uh, it, it's, it's an episode in its own right, I suppose. <laughs> so yeah, exactly. So um, okay. I, <laughs> it's not that I left it out on purpose, but I knew there was a lot of different things yeah. that about the last twenty years. Yeah. But yeah, no, that was a very, very significant um, exhibition for me. And I'm delighted. We, I have a catalogue about that exhibition because that's the only way. Um, it was in Kilmainham Jail, and I don't know if people know Kilmainham Jail. The East Wing is a big hall, you know, this panoptic kind of thing. Um, and you go into the hall, it's an empty hall, and there's 24 um, cells 
along the ground floor and they're all locked and you can only look you go from door to door and you look in through the guard spy hole and that's where you see the um the works they're inside each cell oh. so, um, it was at the time it was a good bit before 2016 so people weren't really um willing to talk about um, what happened in 1916 because like there's been trouble going on in the north wow. and all that and they didn't want to kind of like I grew up um, speaking Irish and I kept that quiet because you know people say oh your name is an Irish you must be an IRA man type of thing mm -hmm. like it's such a narrow kind of view of life that mm -hmm. just because you like you're, you're Irish and you have it's, right. it's the same with the flag you know yeah. At, the, at that time. All right. Does anyone else have any questions? Well, I'm conscious of the time and I'm trying to keep this to around about 45 minutes, which is gone. But, um, you know, we're all enjoying this so much. Um, I'm sure there are some other questions. Any, anyone out there like to, to ask Owen a question? I talk too much. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let me just see if there are any questions here. Yeah, Olivier is saying there's a, a beautiful portrait of Patrick Pierce uh, by Owen at the Pierce Museum, St. Endos. All right, okay. And he's got a link to that as well. Okay, anybody? Maybe Owen, just to say that um, you're going to be in our next show at the gallery as well. <laughs> we're talking about uh, COVID eyes and the idea of resurfacing, you know, so we're going to be doing a show at the gallery very soon and Owen would be one of the artists. So just wanted to say that. Um, just want to say that it's great, great pleasure to work with an artist like Owen McLaughlin, you know, as you can see, he's such a versatile artist and he's a pleasure to work with and a very modest person as well. Uh, so I just want to say that. Very good. Uh, thanks. Thanks, Olivier. You're absolutely right. And well said. Um, Autumn, just a special greeting to you. Thank you very much for joining us this morning. Are you, are you in, um, in Scotland still? I am. Yeah, I'm in the borders. Lovely to see you. How are you? Yeah, uh, fantastic. It's so wonderful to be here. Thanks so much Not for including all. me because this has been just fascinating. Yeah. Oh, and just so wonderful to hear you speak about your work. And um, it's, it's deeply inspiring to me. I, I love to be included with the visual artists because um, I'm not a visual artist, but I find it deeply um, nourishing to my own work so thank you <laughs> for for having me very good excellent thanks so, so much for that autumn I, I did i did actually have one question i was a bit shy about asking but um do we have time for it of course autumn yeah yeah so it was actually about your own writing owen because um uh you know your blog was mentioned earlier um i was wondering does your blog when you're writing your blog and you're maybe researching it for what you'd like to write about does that feed into your creative process um, with painting or is it is it mostly the other way around that your creative process uh, with your work feeds into the blog or is there is there an exchange between the two? I think you'd say there's an exchange between the two because sometimes I mean the blog is um, in a way it's more like a hobby and if I get an idea to write something I mean, I treat it kind of, well, I treat it seriously, but I like to keep it light enough. It's not about, um, like, I don't use arty farty language or art speak, as it's called. I try to keep it kind of very basic, um, not very basic, but just um, not go too deeply into kind of what artists are thinking about. But um, Very often, there's absolutely nothing to do with artists art or artists yeah it's more like the life of the artist like yeah. I, i'm into nature as you might have gathered and you know a few weeks ago it was about swift because there was swift flying all around us and it was great <laughs> you know but then on the other hand um so i ended up um, doing a painting of a, uh, a quick drawing of a swift because um you know I, I mightn't have had anything to put on the blog that week and i didn't know what i was going to paint that week and then i said I'd paint Swifts, you know, after I'd written the blog about Swifts, you know, so yeah. it goes back and forth, yeah. Very good, okay. If there's nobody else, 
we're nearly coming up to 11 o'clock, so I think, I think we might call it a day if there's nobody else to, to ask a question. I think Jack is doing something. Jack, do you want to say something? No, no, I'm good. I'm, I just wanted to say hello to Owen and hello to oh, Autumn. Okay. And, <laughs> and uh, Nicola, pleasure to meet you on uh, virtually. So, and, and all the others, but the ones that I've named are, are ones that, uh, that, I'm, that I know, so. And hello from and, very hot Toronto. Right? Yes, yes. <laughs> The heat wave, I believe, yeah. Yes, we do have a heat wave right now. So. Mm -hmm. Very good. Okay, back back to bed for you two. Yep. <laughs> yeah, thanks for well, so early. <laughs> just, yep. just, just to, to wrap it up, guys, um, my heartfelt thanks to Owen for, for everything, because he's given a lot of his time, uh, both when I went out to, to visit him and do that, that recording, um, and also for, for his time today and showing us everything. It's been a great insight into your work, Owen, and into your life in a, in a lot of respects as well, and aspects that we weren't aware of before. So for that, we're most grateful. Um, and, you know, it's, it's a very humbling experience, I think, when you hear, uh, you know, you invite somebody along to something like this, and you end up finding so much depth to the person. Um, and it's just a wonderful experience to hear that. And thank you so much for that. Um, and on that point, could I ask you if anyone else is interested in doing what Owen has been brave to do, um, to let me know, or if they know of anybody else uh, who'd be interested in, in uh, coming on the, the episode uh, for the artist well, um, and telling us about their work and about their life. So listen, enjoy the rest of the weekend, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us and look forward to seeing you next week. I haven't a clue what's happening next week, but that's the beauty of this. And generally something turns up, that's a bit of fun. And, and, and interesting, and that's that's our aim. Okay, so thank you. Take care. Thanks very much, Ellen. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye now. Bye bye. bye. bye.